Everybody's favorite solution architect, Francis Potter, here to talk to you about CI/CD rules. I struggled with rules when it first came out. I could not figure it out. I'm going to give you some of the secrets that helped me get it. It took a while, but I finally got it. So let's start at the very beginning. Let's start at the top here. So first off, to understand rules, you have to understand variables. Variables in GitLab CI come from a lot of different places. They can be entered manually by the user. They can be in an API request. They can be configured either at the project group or instance level. They can be generated in jobs in previous stages. They can come directly from the CI configuration or they can come from GitLab itself. So they come from a lot of different places and they're used in two different places. One place they're used is in the CI engine inside of GitLab and the other place they're used is in the jobs themselves in the runners where they appear as environment variables. This alone can be kind of confusing because there are so many variables and they come from so many different places. Now, some of those variables are what we call predefined variables. These are defined by GitLab and are populated by GitLab. You shouldn't write to these, but you can read from them. I'm obviously not going to talk about all of these. They're in the reference material, they're in the documentation, and about 90% of them you never need to look at, but they are handy to know about and to reference from time to time. And some of them are very, very handy when setting up rules. Okay. You also need to understand when our pipelines run. There are a lot of different events that can trigger a pipeline to be run. A new commit triggers a pipeline, a new branch triggers a pipeline, a new tag triggers a pipeline. Guess what? If your new commit is also a new branch, it'll trigger two pipelines. So you have to watch out for that. You can also trigger pipelines manually by API call or on a schedule. Your CI jobs and your pipelines can detect how that pipeline was run and it's actually important to use rules to detect how your pipeline and how your jobs are being run in order to prevent the same job from running twice. All right, yeah, so this can get weird. Here's a very simple example. All I did was create a new merge request and I actually ended up with two pipeline runs on the same commit. And that's obviously pretty inefficient for most of the jobs in a pipeline like uh, unit test jobs. So you wanna try to avoid that kind of thing and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, rules, enter rules. Uh, here's the basic outline. Here's your job name, the word rules, the if clause. The if clause can reference variables, okay? For the most part, your if clauses are going to reference variables. Some of the stuff you're used to doing in only and except blocks, like only merge requests or only branches, that stuff's gone away. You have to use variables for everything now, which means you're gonna have to know some of these predefined variables. And then these are the script, this is the script here. So this is an example of a job that only runs in merge requests because it's looking for the CI merge request IID. And so that's the equivalent of only merge requests, kind of, not quite, but more or less, all right? This is rules. So only and accept are gone. You can't use only and accept in the same job that you use rules. And eventually only and accept will go away completely. So you should be using rules and encouraging your customers to use rules everywhere from now on. Rules can do everything that only an accept can do now. So there's no excuse to not use them. All right, so here's the quick reference. Here's what you need to know. There are clauses, operators, results, and when options. So the clauses are if, changes, and exists. If is the one you're gonna use by far the most. It's if and some, uh, some function, some, some expression using variables. Uh, changes allows you to look for which files have changed. Exists allows you to look for which files exist um, or none. And the only place where you can really use none is as the last, um, the last element in your rules, uh, in which case it's assumed that you got there and so you're just gonna do something, right? Um, the operators operate on variables. Uh, you can, the equals equals is obviously equals to, bang equals is not equals to, uh, equal tilde is for regular expressions. This is an and, or this is an or, or you can have just the variable, which will be true if that variable has any value at all. And that's very often the case that you just need if and a variable name, as we saw in the previous example. Okay, the result of the clause is pretty much always when. Now, here is the magic secret that uh, maybe other people figured out really quickly. It took me months to figure out. If you change this W to a T, it all makes sense. This is an if then expression, all right? And it, it's if when, because we want it to be like the when that exists outside of rules, and I get that, 
but it was so confusing to me to have if, when, if then makes sense to me. So there you go. There's your little secret. Um, you can also put your allow failure and your start in clauses in your results. Um, pretty much you need a when, you need a when clause anyway, but you might need one of those other two for special cases. And then when can be when always, when never, when on success, when, when on failure, when manual, when delayed, or there is no when. Okay. Now, what happens when there is no when? And what happens when there is no if? It's really important to understand the defaults here. They totally make sense when you know what they are. So this is a quick reference straight from the documentation, but defaults are when on success and allow failure false. So if you have just an if with no when, then that, that job will run in the case that that if is true, as long as the previous stages have passed, as long as you're in an uh, on success case. Okay, now a job is added to the pipeline if the rule matches and has on success delayed or always, or if no rules match and the last clause, so the last clause is like an else clause. Okay, I'm putting my Python brain on here. When on success, when delayed or when always with no rules. So you're gonna assume that the last clause is when never, all right? Unless you have the last clause is when always. You probably don't wanna do that too often though, and we'll see why in a second. Okay, a job is not added to the pipeline if no rules match, and there's no when on success, when delayed, or when always at the end, right? Um, or if a rule matches and has when never as the attribute. So when never is your way of saying, no, oh, don't run the job in that particular case. All right, boy, that's a lot. Let's look at some examples here. Here's a very simple example. There's a job, it's got a script, it's got two rules. Now, because there's no when clauses here, these are assumed to be when always. They're always gonna run. This is gonna run on any merge request event or any time this pipeline is run on a schedule. All right, very, very simple. There's no when clause. There's just a couple of if statements uh, and, and that's all that happens, right? So the rules can be very, very simple. They can also be incredibly complex. Uh, here's one that will not run on merge request events and will not run on schedule as a scheduled job, but will run in every other case. Now note, if you didn't have this when on success at the end, then this job would never ever ever run because when never is the default at the end. So in this case, you're preventing a couple of cases and then allowing through a specific case. But you have to be careful with that. Remember duplicate pipelines. So this is an example that will create, that will run this job twice in some cases. So you've got an if statement here. The if statement is looking at some custom variable and, and when nevering, and then you're dropping down to when always. So if this is a merge request event that's also a commit, it's gonna actually run twice. Once is the merge request event and once is the commit. You probably wanna filter for that and only have it run on one or the other unless you really intend this job to run in both of those cases. So this is a, it gets a little tricky here. Um, here's a more complex example. Uh, in this case, I've actually got an and because I've got if and changes. So if this variable is equal to this value and there is a change in one or both of these places, then the job will run as a manual job. Okay, so it gets a little more complex. Uh, my last example here, in this particular case, you know, if the commit branch is master, then it will be delayed for three hours and it's allowed to fail. Okay, so those are some examples of rules. I hope this has been helpful. This is just kind of what I learned and what I figured out and, uh, and enjoy.